companies are literally saying where we used to hire five junior analysts, we now hire two. And about half believe that AI will reduce the need for entry-level roles altogether. So what does that mean? It means that that pipeline is thinning out. And folks who do get in are expected to start at a higher level because the basics are already automated. AI is reshaping entry-level careers. So what happens to that talent pipeline? So this article kind of had me squinting a little bit. We're talking about how AI is essentially shaking up entry-level cybersecurity and what that means for the next wave of folks that are coming in. So obviously for a long time now, we have um, analysts, right, that have been doing the grunt work. They're doing triage, they're staring at the logs, they're performing those investigations, really just the stuff that builds up that intuition that you have. And when you think about in the past when we were working in office, these were the people who were able to learn the difference between what is noise, right, and then what is a real threat. And if you work in a SOC, you know exactly what that means. Now, AI is scooping all of that up. And what I mean by that is that we have tools today that are able to parse those logs, that are able to auto-categorize those alerts, summarize the incidents, even recommend what your next steps would should be by just clicking on whatever it is, you know, a, what they call that, a one-click fix. Um, and so when you think about efficiency, that's where we're seeing some of that automation, that, that piece come in. But the problem is the same task that AI is replacing are the same task that people use to struggle through to get their education and their learning, their experience, right? So the article actually calls it out. They say, they say that companies are literally saying where we used to hire five junior analysts, we now hire two. And about half believe that AI will reduce the need for entry-level roles altogether. So what does that mean? It means that that pipeline is thinning out. And folks who do get in, and we talk about this all the time, are expected to start at a higher level because the basics are already automated. I'm going to say that one more time. So folks who do get in are expected to start at a higher level because a lot of those basics are automatic. By the time you get to the alert, everything is there available for you, which you used to have to go find a lot of that information. But these tools are making things a bit more efficient for folks that are in the SOC. Now, when you think about being new to cybersecurity, instead of you being able to learn to crawl, they're basically telling you that you kind of need to come in jogging a little bit. On the flip side, that can absolutely be an advantage if you are intentional. AI can then become a teaching tool, not just something that helps you be more productive. You have those junior analysts that can watch how AI is actually solving things, and then they can start to ask those questions like, why did it do that, to help them pick up on things a bit faster. Um, but companies are already re reworking their programs, their ranges, their attacks, all of that hand hands-on stuff that really builds up the foundation that AI actually can't give you. So I feel like the takeaway here is that AI isn't killing entry-level cyber. It's actually just changing it. We don't need less talent. We need talent that's trained differently. So instead of you being trained to walk, you maybe need to be trained to to run when you come in through the door. And we talked about this, I think, on the last pod. So more cloud, more identity, more automations, more critical thinking, which is a skill set, unfortunately, that a lot of people don't use to their advantage. They think about the technical skills and they leave out those soft skills. But if you're a newbie and you're listening, don't try to be that human filter. Um, focus on understanding the systems, understanding attackers, and how these tools actually think. And if you're a company, you cannot outsource all of your security and give it to AI. We've seen that not necessarily work out in the best. Now, it is good to still have that human element to touch and go in and confirm, okay, this is, in fact, a threat. We do need to go ahead and remediate this, whatever it may be. Um, but AI is just shifting the ground under us. If we adapt our training, our hiring, our mentoring, if we look at these things a lot differently, um, we can actually come out with a stronger workforce and not a weaker one. I just am a little bit frustrated with the rhetoric that cybersecurity is stealing all of the 
degrees, when it's a little bit more, or not degrees, the roles, when it's just a little bit more to it than people say after they say that statement? Yeah. Um. So a couple things. AI, I, this is an inter, interesting thing because I know you have machine learning, AI. Like this thing has been happening for a while. So anybody who has worked on the blue team, you have a tool like a CrowdStrike or Sentinel or Tanium or any other EDR tools. They use a lot of machine learning. And they are constantly evolving and saying, hey, we typically seen this in here. It's connected to Thread and Tail. It's, it's big business. It's using a lot of AI to it, prevent a lot of stuff already. It's a lot of which, stuff feeding into it. Which still takes you to go in and look at the detection and make sure that it didn't miss anything. So I think the big issue is with them trying to automate all the level one stuff is a lot of people may not get the chops to even understand how to really thoroughly go through and investigate something to where now – you pretty much are the middleman, like, hey, um, oh, well, I guess it's an incident. Let me go ask somebody. Exactly. I think that. No, I see. I see where you're going with it. I agree. I think that could be something that's happening. Now, granted, it could be cool where maybe now a lot of people may not be in socket unless now all these people are, are responders. Mm -hmm. So now they're figuring out how to fix problems. Oh, this was compromised. I got to get it offline. I got to get a, um, for instance, copy of this, a snapshot of this, and I got to go through this data, and I got to look for these. Uh, IOCs. Now, it may get to that point where now, instead of that, you're learning how to be an uh, incident responder early on, and then you also got to work on the soft skills, because one of the things people don't talk about a lot, in the SOC, you do a lot of talking to people. That's what I said, it's, <laughs> and it's different when you're in the SOC, and now you're remote, right? You're not, you ain't right here. I can't, can you come here real quick and look at my screen, or can you help me understand what's going on? And, uh, and the culture in the remote world, it's not like I know some jobs have just like a bridge that you can just jump on all day. You know, you you kind of in here hanging out with your coworkers if you yeah, need. Most people got like a little team chat. Exactly, or no, like a a, a meeting. Forget mm -hmm. the chat, like a meeting that y'all can just pop into if you have questions. But that requires you to share your screen and also to be a little bit more vulnerable than you would feel if you were in office. I feel like it feels a little bit more vulnerable to. So he here's the thing, though, question. it depends, though, because, listen, if we could, if I could tell you about some stuff I know about these horror stories of, like, people cherry-picking alerts or just sitting on stuff or really, some other way, got the job, didn't know what they was doing, and skating, like, this long and didn't learn how to do the job, it's a lot. Like, What's the dude from the show we just watched? Are you talking about? Yeah, yeah, um, him. Uh, reasonable <laughs> Doubt, yes. Yeah, the one Bye. with Lewis? Yes. Yeah, yeah. No, nah, he wasn't, see... He wasn't trying to learn it. That's what I'm saying. He was BSing. He, thank you. But it's, it's people like that. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> let's let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Because I, I know of a situation where a person that before I left a company, I personally, me, and everybody else pretty much said yes to him. Because he was like, no way. Everybody else be, uh, we've seen like white people get jobs they shouldn't have or work with us. Like for sure. I was like, you know what? Give him a try. He, they weren't the strongest, but we, we liked them, and we felt like he'd be doing all right. Four years later, that guy's completely regressed, and he's no longer with the regressed company. Regressed is crazy. Yeah, and I was just was telling my friend, I was just like, man, I wish I could, like some stuff I'm not supposed to know, so I was like, but I wish I could talk to him like, yo, we went on a limb and, and got you on, and, you're and not, now you're going to make it harder for other people other, that look like yep. us to get on. Yep. And I don't think people would be understanding. They'd be very selfish with that, not understanding how all the red it tape it is of today of qualified people today all the stuff that we've been talking about with the hidden market all that stuff is going on and it's people inside the org where we're fighting like nah we need diversity on a team like for the longest I was trying to get women on a team because they do pay attention to detail women are the, are the number one lurkers <laughs> you always gotta be shady <laughs> they are we do women have been Best we do lurking, like since forever. That's why they make such good recruiters. <laughs> like for real. But in all seriousness, you if you get an opportunity, make the most out of it. That's what I'll say. Make the most out of your opportunity. Don't squander it because opportunities are not plentiful right now. I please say it again. Like it's so it's so hard for people to land right now and just don't be the person that it ends with you because you didn't do a good job, right? You want to do a good – hopefully you want to do good enough of a job so that somebody believes in giving someone else a chance, right? I, that's how I kind of want to approach it. I want to knock it out the park. 
Yeah. So that you like, oh yeah, I want to do this again. We might get some more good talent, or we don't know what can come of this opportunity. 